Six warning signs of a false church. If I'm asked, Brother Andrew, how do I know I'm in a true Bible-believing church? The Apostle Paul in Galatians 1.8 says, But even though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than that which we've already preached to you, let him be accursed. I know that's an often used verse of scripture, but now, instead of sounding like we're being judgmental, let's ask ourselves the following questions. One out of six points. Do they teach salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone? Do they teach his virgin birth, his perfect virtuous life, his redemptive substitutionary sacrifice and death on Calvary, his rising victorious from the grave after three days, his resurrection? While these things I just mentioned may sound repetitious to many of us believers in Jesus, every point we mentioned is important. If they don't fully accept, believe in, and embrace any part of what we listed, then the local church is in grievous error. Second warning sign of a false church. Does the church I fellowship at have or give significance to any other book or any other person? Is undue homage paid to another person or are they quoted almost as often as the Lord Jesus or the Bible? If so, then it's a cult. Run for your life, my friend. Run for your life. You've been warned. Nothing and no one can compare to, let alone dare, to try and supersede the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible, the Word of God. Third point, sign of a false church. Is there undue elevation of one man? It could be a woman, but often a man. The main leader or pastor. Do people quote him of? and refer to him with almost a God-like reverence? Do they try to talk like him, to walk like him? I kid you not, I'm speaking from decades of ministry experience. They try to talk like him, walk like him, imitate him. Yes, really. And that's a form of hero worship. This is dangerous, my friend. Remember, decades ago, there was one Jim Jones and his followers who went to South America and they all ended up under his decree committing suicide. Never, never should any mere man be venerated so in such a way. Remember the late Chinese dictator Mao? The people would say, and they were taught to say, Chairman Mao say, Chairman Mao say. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Yes, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. Only to the degree I follow Christ. When I deviate, don't ever follow me. Fourth, telltale sign if I'm in a false church. Are we being taught to follow the leader in lockstep? To give blind allegiance to him? I'm just going to use him for now. Could be a her. Or to the local church and its bylaws and constitution? Of course we need those things. But nothing is to supersede the word of God. And then, is your minister introduced with much fanfare? And then... The associate says, and now we welcome God's man of the hour. Honestly, that makes me want to throw up. Hear me, dear friend. Jesus Christ has always been and always will be God's man of the hour. Only Jesus Christ is worthy of such a title. Occasionally, I have been introduced with such accolades. They have no idea. I am cringing on the inside, Lord. And I just like, please, 
Give all the praise, the honor, and glory to Jesus. Beware, dear friend. Only allow the word of God to be our sure foundation. No one else, nothing else, no other person, no other document. And number five of six. Do you need to submit all major life decisions to your pastor or leadership? Who you marry? Whether you accept a new job out of state? Stringent oversight into how much money you put into the church? If so, run my friend. This has all the markings of a controlling atmosphere. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast in the liberty with which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled or bound again in the yoke of bondage. Yes, we can seek counsel regarding marriage from our parents, our leaders, our pastors. Of course we can do that. But the decision as to who we marry is ours to make. To receive counsel and wisdom is a wonderful thing. But the decision is not theirs to make. It's ours, ultimately. Likewise, you can apply this to any other potentially life-changing decision. And number six of six. Is your church involved in a lot of legalism? That is, you must wear your clothes a certain way. Your hair must be a certain length. Ladies must have clothes a certain length. You must attend so many services per week. While these may sound strange to some of us, they are quite real to others, sadly. We need to come out of such bondage. In John 8, 36, we read, For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Now, by the way, don't take number six to mean I can dress how I want. I can do what I want. I can be disrespectful. No, Galatians 5.13 says, For brethren, brothers and sisters, we have been called to liberty, but do not use that liberty as an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. In other words, we've been called to liberty in Christ, but not to licentiousness or license of the flesh. God bless you.